Pastor Kadia and and uh, Young and uh, McCollum and Turner and uh, the presiding minister and all of the preachers and pastors of the Kansas City Baptist Ministers Fellowship. Let me thank you for putting up with me this week. It's, it's been a joy and a privilege to have been um, honored uh, to come and share these three days with you. I want to do what they told me in seminary was a therapeutic sermon. They said there were four and the three others were doctrinal, Christian growth, evangelistic, and therapeutic. So today I want to do a therapeutic sermon. Isaiah chapter 40. And I'm reading from the New English translation of Holy Scripture. It says in verse... Twenty-nine. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increaseth strength. Even youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Thank you so much. I want to talk today about how to de-stress the stress. How do those who are stressed get de-stressed? Oh, I could talk about, um, I guess, uh, some stress busters. I think you will agree that all of us have a problem with stress. I just says that the young will grow weary and faint and fall under stress. Stress is not just something that plagues uh, the youth, but also those of us who are of age. Stress affects the life and infects the life of everybody. Um, 
what is stress? Stress is that which you experience when what you can do can't keep up with what you want to do. Now, I'm not in here by myself. Because all of us want to do some things that we used to do, but just can't do no more. It's when what you can do can't keep up with what you want to do. I'm not in here by myself, aren't I? Um, what are the causes of stress? One depleted supply. Two, demand for service. Three, dissipation of sin. And four, the devices of Satan. Can I talk a little while? Um, depletion of supplies. When... You got more needs than you got supplies to meet the needs. That causes stress. And some of y'all look like you may be running a little short. Or even you've run out. Or maybe you just run down. But whenever you run out of anything, it causes stress. Depleted supplies. Secondly, demand for service. I often remind my wife that she and I have been blessed with a comfortable lifestyle. And we could do well if we didn't keep on getting demands for service. <laughs> From our children and grandchildren and and kinfolk and friend folk and church folk. And sometimes you keep on telling people my supplies are depleted, de depleted, but they keep on demanding service. And that can cause stress. Because I got enough for me, I just don't have enough for you. Depleted supplies. Demand for service. And sometimes when the demand for service continues to increase and the supplies continue to decrease, you are tempted to step outside of God's will. And get what you need out of his will 
because you don't think you can get it if you stay in his will. And that leads to the dissipation of sin. And then, of course, there is always the devices of Satan. He knows when to come, doesn't he? He waits until you reach your breaking point or, or, or your boiling point. And then he shows up with his temptations. Well, stress is the number one silent killer. Stress can cause sickness. Sleeplessness. Contribute and if not called suicide. Stress is a deadly and silent killer. It can cause loss of memory. Loss of hair. Yeah. <laughs> Headache, heart attack. Yeah. Strokes. Yeah. Anxiety. Yeah. Depression. Yeah. And of course... There are other things that can cause stress, loss of your job, loss of a spouse, either by death or divorce, loss of joy, loss of any kind can cause stress. And then there is that bad report from the doctor. That'll put you under stress. And even though some of you are young and restless, Are settled and seasoned. You're on the edge of your night. And you're caught up in a secret storm. Looking for a guiding light. As your world turns. To lead you to a brighter day because you're trying to avoid General Hospital. And I came to bring you some good news today. Because I don't care what kind of stress you're under, I've got a across the counter. Prescription that won't just relieve your stress, it'll cure your stress. Anybody here needs some stress release and stress relief? And let, let me tell you now, you, you can't get it by turning to uh, drugs and alcohol. And uh, promiscuous uh, 
sexual encounters or taking aspirin, popping pills or vitamin B complex or Tums, none of that will cure your stress. It'll simply just cause more stress. But Isaiah tells us um, that there is a cure for stress. And I think we all agree in agreement that everybody in here got a problem with stress. Now let's look, let's look then at the promise of strength. Because everybody who's got a problem with stress, God promises strength. And he promises strength because he has a program of service that he wants to enlist us in. Listen to what Isaiah says. He says, and they that wait on the Lord. Let's just stop right there, because that's the first thing you got to do. Now, if, if you wait on the Lord, he will equip you and enable you to give him service. But that first must be a longing for the Lord. Now, what does it mean to wait on the Lord? It doesn't mean that you sit by and do nothing and depend on God to do everything. Um, that, that word wait uh, means uh, to pursue after. You come after the Lord. Uh, you guys remember when uh, in your young days you, 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 you saw somebody you wanted and you pursued after her. You, 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 you wooed her to try to win her. You called her. You went by to see her. You picked her up. You did nice things for her. Gave her gifts. You pursued her. And some of you caught up with her. She might regret she stopped, but you caught her. So that word wait means that you pursue God. You, you, you pray to God. You press your way to God. You love God. You seek God. You go after God. And if you go after God, here's what he's promised. He says, I will renew your strength. Listen to Matthew 11, 28. Come unto me, all you who labor. And are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. And learn of me. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. You got to have a longing for God. That's that's part of the pursuit of God. Listen to what Psalm 62 says. For God alone. My soul waits. In silence. From him comes 
my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be greatly shaken. If you really want to know what the cure for stress is, number one, you got to have a longing for God. But then there's a second one. You have to look to God. And you have to live for God. And you have to listen to God. And listen to what Proverbs 8 and 34 says. Blessed is the one who listens to me. You got to do more than just long for him. You got to listen to him. He knows what you're up against. He knows how much you can bear. He knows when you are emotionally exhausted. And when you are empty spiritually. And when you have overextended yourself financially, he knows when you are under duress and stress. And you do know that stress can make you snap. Some of y'all may be on the verge of snapping now. And then after the snap comes the crackle and the pop. Because stress will make you go snap, crackle, pop. I'm trying to tell you, you can have a nervous breakdown. If, if, you, if you don't get some release and relief, you could lose your mind. And I've just told you, the first thing you got to do what? Is long for God. Go after God. Pursue him. Pray to him. Press your way to him. Don't let nothing and nobody stop you from getting to him. And then I said to you, you got to listen to the Lord. Anybody knows he will talk to you. He will instruct you. He will direct your path. But then you have to look to the Lord. Psalms 104, verse 27. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. If God will feed the chicks, he'll feed his children. Anybody here know he'll do it? But then Psalm 25 says that we have to live for him. Long for him. Listen to him. Look to him. And live for him. I've just given you a prescription that's across the counter. Over the counter. And if you'll take it, it's a stress buster. Now listen, Psalm 25, verse 12, I'm almost finished. Who is the man who fears the Lord? He will instruct in the way that he should choose. 
See, God wants us to live or to allow him to live in us. I mean, that's what it's all about. Greater is he that is in you. You do know that's where he lives, in you. Than he that is in the world. God has come through the Holy Spirit to set up residence inside every believer. And the Spirit of God lives in me to teach me, to guide me, to direct me, to show me what I don't know. Because if you are like I am, there's a lot of ignorance in my head. There's some things I don't know, some things I can't see. And I need the Holy Spirit inside of me to direct my path. And if I will acknowledge him, he will instruct me. But then I just says, he says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, shall exchange their weakness for his strength. And then he says, and they shall mount up wings like eagles. And they shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Well, I've said to you, first of all, that if you serve the Lord, he will give you soaring power. But you can't get the soaring power until you long for him, look to him, live for him, learn of him. God will give you soaring power. Because God is the source of my supplies. He is the source of my strength. He is my sufficiency when I am deficient. You know what 2 Corinthians chapter 3 says? Can I read it for you? Verse 5. Thank you for giving me permission to read it. Here's what 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 5 says. Not that we are sufficient in ourselves to claim anything as coming from us. Listen to that. Not that we are sufficient in ourselves to claim anything that is coming from us. Watch what he says. But our sufficiency is from God. Now that's the book there. God is my sufficiency. And it does not matter what I am deficient in. God has more than enough. He is my source. He is my supplier. He is my strength. Is there a witness in this house? And you know, uh, 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 an eagle is a very extraordinary bird. Um, an eagle can normally fly 50 miles per hour. And in stormy weather, Uh the eagle can fly twice as fast. You know why? Because the eagle takes advantage of the undercurrent and the turbulence 
And instead of flying away from the storm or under the storm or over the storm, that eagle flies straight through the storm. And he flies higher, further, and faster because he's equipped to take advantage of the turbulence. Some of y'all looking at me now look like you're going through some turbulence. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Look like you're facing some, some undercurrents. But I want to tell you something. God is able. And not only will he take you through, he may choose to take you around. He may choose to take you over. He may choose to take you under. That's his choice. But here is the good news. You will survive your storm. And I don't care how long you've been in your storm. You can be a storm survivor. If you just let the Savior help you. Anybody in here know if you ask the Lord to help you, he will help you and he will comfort you and strengthen you and keep you. And if you look over to Jesus, he will carry you through. Has he ever carried any of y'all through? I don't know what he's done for you, but I know what he's done for me. Because I've been in some storms. But the Lord carried me through. That's why I praise him. That's why I love him. That's why I serve him. Because he's a good God. But then let me close. Not only will he give you soaring power. But he will give you staying power. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and they shall mount up with wings like eagles and they shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint. Now, I, I don't need uh, strength like an eagle to fly. I don't need strength like an athlete to run. I'm too old to do either one of those now. And I'm not the only one in that AARP group either. I'm, I'm at the point in my life where uh, I'm not running from anybody. Lord have mercy. I, I, don't, I don't plan to try to fly over anybody. I just want to walk now. Do, do, do I have a witness somewhere? Yeah. And, and you know, um, uh, I can walk uh, further than I can run. I can walk Further than I can run faster. There was a time I could run faster and further, but those days are past and gone. All I want to do now is just walk. I want the Lord to just walk with me. While I'm on my tedious journey, and it is a tedious journey, I just want Jesus to walk with me. I want him to hold my hand and to guide my feet and to see for me while I run this race. Because I believe if he walked with Enoch, He'll walk with me. 
Do I have a witness somewhere? And if he will walk with me. Like the eagle. I can increase my elevation. And my acceleration. On my way to my destination. Oh, I like that. I'm going to preach Hicks. I said, if he walks with me. I can uh, increase my elevation. And my acceleration. On my way to my destination. Is there anybody here want to come and go with me to my father's house? Because that's where I'm headed. I'm going up yonder to get my reward. No more crying. No more dying. No more giving up the right for the wrong. No more tears to shed. No more burdens to bear. I'm going up yonder to get my uh, reward. I don't know how you feel about it. But I just want the Lord uh, to see for me. See over the hills and around the corners. See what I can't see. And then just hold my hand and and just guide my feet while uh, I uh, run this race. And I don't mean run in the sense that I'm, yeah, going to pick up speed. No, no, I told you I done got too old to run. But what I want to do is just walk. And when I walk, I want to put one foot above the other and just walk on by faith and walk on in his grace and walk on in his favor. I don't know about you this evening, but I want the Lord to stay with me, stand by me, keep my heart Keep my, yes, mine. Help me to make it uh, cross the finish line. I don't know uh, how long uh, I got yet to walk. But one thing I know, I got fewer days in front of me than I have behind me. So I have decided uh, to walk on uh, by faith and if I get weary I'm going to walk on tears in my eyes I'm going to walk on friendless I'm going to walk on hellhounds on my trail but I'm going to walk on is there anybody here done made up your mind you're going to walk on and you know that you'll never Walk by yourself. He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me that I am his own. And the voice I hear ringing in mine ear, none other has ever known. Won't he walk with you? Won't he talk with you? Say yes.